Capture One has just released version 21 of their photo editing software, and it includes some interesting new features that we're going to take a look at in this video. But the big question, the main question that I think needs to be asked, and hopefully we'll find an answer in this video, is whether this upgrade is worth the money. Because if you were using Capture One 20 or earlier, this is a paid upgrade, unlike the subscription version, which you can download for free and install and start using right now. But for everyone else, you have to buy it. So is it worth buying? Let's find out. How's it going, everyone? My name is Todd Domini. Always a pleasure to see you. Before we begin, I just want to quickly point out that the version of Capture One that I'm going to be using in this video is the very, very latest beta version of version 21. And I'm doing so because I want to make this video, get it produced, get it edited, get it uploaded and out to help you make a purchasing decision. All of the features, everything that I'm going to be demonstrating here are exactly the same as what's in the final release. So as far as new features goes, there's some pretty interesting new stuff. There is a new dehaze slider, which will sound familiar if you are a user of Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. There's something new called Pro Standard Camera Profiles. Going to take a look at that. There's also some new keyboard shortcuts called Speed Edit Keys, which sounds pretty cool. Going to give that a try. And there's also just some, some general usability user interface changes as well, which we will cover in this video. So let's begin with this image here. This is shot in the Dolomites region of Northern Italy, up in the mountains. And as you can see, I mean, there's a fair amount of just atmospheric haze kind of hanging uh, around in the background behind this building here. In order to help remove some of that haze, what I'm going to do is just push dehaze over here to the right. It's targeting a very specific range of tonal values in the image, unlike contrast, which just kind of parts the ocean. It just, it just pushes everything from the midtones out towards uh, white and black in a linear way, in a very even way. Dehaze, on the other hand, targets the midtones and the shadows and pushes just that region down, but it does so while preserving your blacks and preserving your highlights and your whites. So by adding a little bit of positive dehaze, we are bringing some extra clarity into the background back here. And in case you didn't know, one of the ways that you can also use dehaze is to use dehaze in the negative. And to be honest, I mean, when I used Adobe Lightroom and Camera Raw more, I found myself using negative dehaze quite a lot because instead of bringing those shadows and midtones down towards black, it actually lifts those, um, those values and pushes them further up. They have something here called shadow tone. And this is kind of like an intelligent way for Capture One to target a specific region of the, of the image based on its uh, color value. So it's already automatically guessed that this kind of like light um, slate blue color, which is what you see back here in the peaks, that's pretty accurate. You don't have to keep auto. You can actually do your own thing here. And you can do so by clicking this eyedropper here. And what Capture One recommends doing is picking a dark shadowy region of the image where you're, you're seeing the most haze, the most atmospheric haze. So I'm going to come over here to the far left into this kind of like pocket back here in the in the mountains. It's actually adjusting the color temperature a little bit. It's injecting a little bit of warmth, a little bit of color. It's a subtle difference, but see, this is auto here, and it just looks a little bit bluer. Whereas with this, I think the results look a little more natural and a little more like what I was expecting it to do. Now, if you are familiar with the dehaze tool in Lightroom and Camera Raw, you may have noticed something when I pushed that dehaze slider into the positive. So. If you didn't notice, let me point it out to you. You see the foreground here and how it's it's starting to get kind of muddy and kind of splotchy and there's some saturation and uh, it, it just doesn't look particularly good. I mean, what's behind the building is looking better, but what's in the foreground really does not. And let me just push it back and forth. It's affecting areas of the image which which really doesn't need help. And let me switch over to Lightroom so that you can see the difference. So here we are in Lightroom, same exact raw image. And let me increase dehaze here and watch what happens here. You see how it's targeting just this area behind the building and the sky behind it. It is almost as if it's using some kind of luminosity mask behind the scene in order to bring down the luminosity of that particular area. And it's doing it without affecting the foreground as opposed to capture one, which it just doesn't quite look as as nice, I think. Quick tip though, if you are someone who has been using negative dehaze in Lightroom in order to lift those shadow values like I talked about before, and you wanna do so uh, without increasing saturation or without affecting saturation, an easy way to do that in Capture One is to not use this new dehaze tool, but rather let me just draw 
a radial mask on top of the image here. I'm just going to bring out a little bit of inject a little bit of light here into the center of the image. And instead of using dehaze, what I'm going to use is something that is actually unique to Capture One, and that is the Luma curve. This is a tone curve that does not affect saturation, and the results look natural. The colors do not shift. Let me just turn that on and off so you can see. See how subtle that is? Let's take a look at another example here. Now, this image here was shot on the uh, coastline of, uh, I think this, yeah, this was up in Washington State. So obviously plenty of haze, plenty of atmosphere there. And when you increase that dehaze, it really starts to bring it out. And let me just zoom in here really quick and show you, I mean, look at what's going on with this C stack here. You see the, the color and the tonality in the rock that is starting to come out. If I look at the same image in Adobe Lightroom, and let's take a look at the difference. So let me just park it right around 25. Come back here. Okay, so that's with dehaze and capture one. Give you one more look at it. <laughs> and then back to Lightroom. I mean, you see all the color and the tonality here. And then if we come back over here to Lightroom, it's really interesting, isn't it? I mean, it's not just the dehaze slider. I mean, there is something about how raw data is processed in Capture One that is just different from Lightroom and, and how Adobe does it. And this is one of the reasons why, honestly, I switched to Capture One because it always seemed to bring something and bring some kind of character out of the image that just did not exist, that I just wasn't able to see in Lightroom, which I think this is a very good example of the two. So, I mean, comparing Capture One to Lightroom, I mean, I think it really comes down to, it's, it's a subjective call. It's a matter of personal opinion, what you think looks better, what you prefer. And I think in some ways it really depends on what image you're editing as well, because I have noticed that sometimes dehaze looks nice and sometimes it just, eh, like that first one that I showed you, it just doesn't quite work as well. But in this image, it seemed to, it seemed to do a much better job. Okay, I think we covered dehaze pretty well, so let's move on to feature number two, and we're gonna be talking now about the new Pro Standard Camera Profile. Now, in case you've never noticed, when you import a raw image into Capture One or any other raw photo processing app, there are uh, correction profiles both for the lens that you're using and there are profiles for the camera itself. And these profiles help the software know how to interpret that raw data, how to turn the zeros and ones of that digital data into uh, an actual image. So this one, okay, I already have Pro Standard turned on. So let me go back to generic and then go to Pro Standard, generic, Pro Standard. And you notice what's happening in the, in the trees in the lower left-hand corner down here. You see the reflection in the water. The green actually looks a little more correct. There's not as much of that bluish kind of color cast that's going on there. And you can actually see some of it in the trees on the side of the mountain as well. And what Capture One claims this is for is that it's most usable or most useful rather with uh, product photography, with portraits and with anything where color accuracy is, is super important. Like, especially if you're doing any kind of brand work and things like that, it's really designed to be a more color accurate version, I think, than, than the generic. Is it a huge change? No. I mean, could you be making changes like these anyway, just with the, the editing tools in Capture One? Yeah. But does Pro Standard give you a better place to be editing from? I think so. It's not a huge difference, but it is something. All right, feature number three in version 21 is something new called speed keys. It's a rather hard phrase to say. When speed keys are uh, enabled in Capture 121, what they allow you to do is to quickly access the sliders from the panel directly from the keyboard. It's almost like, like playing a PC game or something on a keyboard where everything is within the left side of the keyboard over here and you're using a mouse over here on the right. All of the speed keys are kind of grouped over here on the left, which allows you to quickly with one hand, you know, pull up exposure, pull up contrast, pull up brightness, whichever ones that you want. And then with your mouse, you click and hold and then drag the mouse left and right. So you don't even have to click on the slider itself at the bottom of the screen. And this is really nice because I've actually used this on a trackpad as well on my MacBook Pro. And it's just, it's, it's super intuitive just to hold the key down and just move the, your finger back and forth on the uh, trackpad. 
By the way, speaking of preferences, if you come up here to preferences and then go to general, at the bottom you'll see the new speed edit row. And what this is doing here is that, well, you can toggle it on and off for one thing, but there's also this sensitivity slider here. And if you crank this all the way up, let's just put it up to 100 and then drag left and right, you can see that it's it's pretty pronounced and I'm not moving the mouse that much. Bring sensitivity all the way back down, press and hold, exposure, and now see how it's like a micro adjustment. Like it's just very, very slight, very small. So as I mentioned before, you can edit these keys, by the way, just come up here to edit, edit keyboard shortcuts, and then you have speed edit keys here. And you can't assign them to everything. I mean, it's only like the major ones. I mean, not every slider in Capture One is available to you. So that covers Dehaze, the new uh, Pro Standard camera profiles and speed keys. The rest of the enhancements that are part of version 21 are like user interface usability improvements. Up here in the top toolbar, you will notice that there is a new learn icon up here. It kind of looks like a YouTube icon. And if you open that, I think this is probably some kind of web view that is loading in this content remotely so that Capture One can be um, like remotely promoting, uh, you know, new videos, new tutorials. The other thing that they have um, made some improvements to is the import modal. The import modal is different. I mean, they've done things like, you know, like this little text here that says your files will stay where they are when you are adding to a catalog. This is something like I think that has always been a little bit confusing. You know, how do I leave my files where they are, but use them in a Capture One catalog or should I import them into Capture One? They've definitely improved some of the language and some of the copy in the app. And they've also improved the import modal so that you're able to uh, make selections from different archives. And it, it's just like a little more, a little more finished, a little more, um, a little more control now. Another thing you'll notice is that when you mouse over some of the uh, some of the panels here, you'll see that this you know this little tooltip kicks out. Other improvements in version twenty one include support for the HEF, I think is how you pronounce it, um, H E I F uh, image format that uh, Apple you know uses is like the the default on iPhones now. You can import those eight bit HEF HEF whatever it is. And then, of course, there is the usual list of bug fixes and improvements for both Mac and Windows. There's also some new camera profiles in there for some recently uh, released cameras. And all that ultimately brings us back to hopefully answering the core question, the main question that I wanted to answer in this video, and that is whether version 21 is a worthwhile upgrade if you are currently using Capture 120 or earlier. Well, for me, I use Capture 120. I mean, I only recently started using Capture One. I'm relatively new to the product, though I would imagine there's probably a fair number of people about, out there who've been using Capture One for years. Maybe you've skipped a few versions. So by upgrading to 21, you're not only getting the new features in 21, but everything that came in between as well. If you are currently using 20, like I am, I think it really depends on on how much like uh, how much value you see in there being a the uh, the new dehaze slider, if that is something of interest to you, if that is something you see using a lot in your type of photography, because it is a contrast tool at the end of the day, and there are other ways of achieving contrast. And then there's the pro standard camera profiles. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's a placebo effect, but I mean, it seemed like every time. I switched from generic to pro standard, no matter which image I threw at it, there was just something about it which always seemed to look better. And this is, by the way, on top of a raw processing engine that for me at least has always been superior in Capture One compared to Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. And then the third feature, speed keys. I mean, I'm telling you, once I started using it and once I started getting comfortable, there's a fluidity to it and there's a motion to it and there's a rhythm to it that just feels really, really nice. I think it's a really smart addition. And it's such a simple little thing that um, such a clever idea, but it really does help. In a lot of ways, it actually reminds me of the uh, of the Loop Deck product. You've probably heard of that before, you know, using shortcuts and keys over here and buttons in order to, you know, in order to be making adjustments to things. But with this, there's no extra hardware to buy. I mean, you just use it with your keyboard and your mouse. And then with everything else, like the tool tips and the tutorial links and all that, I think a lot of that is great for new users who are onboarding to Capture One. But for legacy people who've been around, who know Capture One, it doesn't really add anything new. So overall, I mean, that's basically it. I mean, and I have to say, I'm, I'm a little disappointed because there are some things that 
I really wish Capture One could do that, that it can't. And it's going to be a while before there's another major upgrade, including, for example, being able to blend multiple exposures into a single composite HDR image, which is like the one thing that I have to go back to Lightroom to do. And I don't think it's just me. Like I know other photographers out there who always shoot bracketed exposures. Like they always do it because they always want to make sure that they have coverage. They always have backup in case they blow out their highlights or something like that. But they also have the ability to blend them into a single composite HDR, which gives you all kinds of latitude. Personally, I would love to see that feature added. And I'm, and I'm kind of disappointed that it hasn't happened yet. However, all of this, of course, is coming from someone who currently uses Capture One, who enjoys Capture One, who prefers using Capture One compared to uh, similar products from Adobe. So if you are a new person, if all of this is new to you, then I would highly recommend just downloading a free beta. Uh, it's like a 30 day trial of Capture One. Open up some of those raw images from Lightroom. See how they look. See how the raw processing in Capture One is different. Try editing it. See what kind of results you get and see how they're different from Lightroom and see if you prefer it. I think uh, I think it's definitely worth the time. That's what I did and I ended up getting hooked to it. So I would love to hear from you. Are you a Capture One user? If so, what version are you currently using? And are you planning on upgrading to version 21? If you are gonna upgrade, what are you most excited about? What are you most looking forward to? Please feel free to leave a comment below. As always, I appreciate your time. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please remember to subscribe to this channel as well. That's it for me, everyone. I'll see you next time.